I'm Dr. Kavita Chintala, Clinical Director and Senior Pediatric International Cardiologist at Care Hospitals Hyderabad. In this video, we will be discussing about the treatment of a ventricular septal defect and how to follow these children. Now, a ventricular septal defect is the most common congenital heart disease in children worldwide. It is a defect or a hole. Commonly, it is referred to as a hole in the heart. Now, this hole is present in the wall that divides the two lower chambers called ventricles. So, it's a ventricular septum is the wall and the defect is a VSD in short. Now, the treatment of the VSD depends on few factors. It is the time of presentation and the size of the hole. The size of the hole tends to be very important. A small VSD may often be asymptomatic, meaning the children may not show any signs and symptoms of VSD and it can be picked up by an examination by a pediatrician who finds a murmur or an abnormal sound on auscultation of the heart. So small VSDs are often we just follow them over time because a significant proportion of them depending on where they are located can close spontaneously without any treatment. So small VSDs most often close on their own and don't require any treatment. The moderate VSDs are in between the small and large ones and we have some clinical criteria of how we label them small, moderate and large. The moderate VSDs, the children are often symptomatic. They can have breathing difficulty, feeding difficulty, poor weight gain and frequent chest infections. And these children often may have heart failure. So the symptoms I have listed are symptoms of heart failure. So when they have that, the initial treatment would be medical treatment. So we give them what is called decongestive therapy or therapy for heart failure. And despite the treatment, if the child is not gaining weight, continues to be symptomatic, then this child will require treatment. I'll discuss that with the large VSD. Now in a large VSD, most of the large VSDs, the children are symptomatic. In fact, very early in infancy, they can have similar symptoms as I discussed under moderate VSD. And these VSDs absolutely will require treatment and the ideal age to repair them is less than nine months of age because we know that if treatment of these VSDs, large VSDs are delayed, then they can develop some problems with their lung, meaning they can develop pulmonary hypertension and pulmonary vascular disease, which often can be dangerous. And if they are left with that lung disease, then in future, they may become inoperable. So timing of operation is also very important for large VSDs. Now, there are two ways in which we can treat a moderate and a large VSD. The first method is a surgical method and the second method is what we call a percutaneous method or a non-surgical method. In surgical method, it is an open heart operation where the surgeon will put the baby under bypass machine and then cut the sternum, open the heart and put a patch using several prosthetic materials or pericardium, we close the hole where it is present. So this is a surgical method and the typical recovery time for a surgical VSD would be a week's time. The children are usually recovered and be able to be sent home. Now, uh, the rate of complications and recovery is a little bit more as compared to the percutaneous procedure, which is the second method. So second method is the percutaneous closure, or we call them transcatheter closure, or we even refer to them as device closure. So this is a method where without an operation, without the surgeon cutting open the chest and without the child requiring heart-lung bypass machine, in a beating heart, we take the patient to the cath lab and we go through the vein inside the heart, inside the hole with some wires and material called the catheters and through those catheters we insert devices. So these devices are little button like uh, equipment that is made of uh, mesh of uh, wire and some mat prosthetic material and these buttons are released across the holes to close them. So they are very popular in this day and age and whenever it allows us to close by a non-surgical method we prefer the percutaneous closure over a surgical method but there are sometimes the VSDs may be too large or may be located in a position where we may not be able to deploy devices. 
Now the advantages of this percutaneous procedure is that it is a short procedure. We are often able to finish this in 30 minutes to one hour. The patient's recovery time is excellent. So they are often able to go the next day or sometimes even the same day they may be discharged home. There are no cuts or opening of the sternum. So there's no wound healing problem. And, and I think the topmost from a family point of view is that there is no chest scar. So they heal very well. They just have a little bandage on their thighs when they go home. So the recovery time is excellent and there are less post-operative complications that we see with surgical methods. So the preferred method when possible is a device closure or a transcatheter closure or a non-surgical closure. For those patients that are not suitable for this kind of procedure, we send them for surgery. Now what happens after this procedure or surgery? How is the follow-up for these children? Um, again, these children, I want to um, emphasize that these children do extremely well in their future. So there are really no residual problems once the hole is closed. These children have a normal lifestyle, a normal school going period and their survival is also normal. But they do require uh, intermittent follow up in our clinics. We, we do uh, electrocardiogram to monitor their heart rhythm. We do echocardiographic imaging of the heart in order to look at inside of the heart to see how the hole has closed, how the chambers have remodeled, how the blood is flowing. So they get periodic EKGs and echocardiograms and we assess them in the outpatient clinics to make sure they are healing and recovering well. So the initial follow-up within the first year can be a little frequent, maybe three or four times in the first year, but then we space out their follow-ups. And as I mentioned, these children have an excellent outcome. Thank you very much.